What is going on guys, Ben Glenn here, coming back at you with another video. Today we're doing another Madden NFL 18 fantasy style rebuild of the New Orleans Saints. Their top three players are listed here, Cameron Jordan, Drew Brees, and Mark Ingram. However, I would say these are not the top three players um, for this team's future, at least in this fantasy style rebuild where we can do anything that we want in order to get the Saints team as good as possible. So as much as I love Breezes Christ, and I think he's top five QB in the NFL easily, he probably will not be on the team for the remainder of this rebuild. Um, he's still really good. I think he could take us probably to the Super Bowl, but we're going to bring in a fresh face for the future. And for some reason, he always leaves the Saints in the uh, franchises that I've done in the past anyways. Like no matter what, he is never back on the Saints. It's pretty interesting. I feel like there's no way he's not going to be on the Saints next year. Who knows what direction the Saints end up going, though. Drew Brees could easily take a team, I think, like the Jags to the Super Bowl or maybe the Broncos. Tremendous quarterback. The Chargers are so stupid with letting him go. However, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about the Chargers. We're talking about the Saints. And we got to do a lot to this organization, I think, to uh, turn them around, bring in some new pieces. Oh, they do have a lot of young talent. I think Von Bell could be really good. I think that um, Alvin Kamara could be really good. I mean, you look at the emergence of guys like Michael Thomas. They have talent on this team. They do. Let's go ahead and get into this, though. Did I, I say that word? It doesn't matter. I hate these headphones. I can never say what I want to say while I'm wearing them. It's ridiculous. It's noise canceling. Whatever. All right, so this is the team. I'm clearly not going to stick with Mark Ingram. Ted Ginn's got to go. Uh, Willie Sneed likely has to go. Same thing with Kobe Fleener. Uh, same thing. If we can even find a trade partner. Um, he's only 27. I mean, Josh Hill could be the move at tight end. I'm not sure. Kobe Fleener's like 30 at this point nearly. So I don't really want that. On the offensive line, Max Unger's got to go. Larry Warford. He's like, what, 28 probably? 26. Okay. Thought he was older. Um, I don't know. He was decent on the Lions. He's like, okay now. I could probably work with that. John Greco has got to go. Ryan Ramchek can definitely stay. Uh, Tron Armstead can stay. On the defensive side of the ball, what do we have here? Um, I really like Marcus Williams, actually. Uh, even though as much as I love Kenny Vaccaro, hook him horns, Kenny Vaccaro probably has to go. Von Bell's a really low overall. Gerald Hodges got to go. AJ Klein, Michael Mowdy, Matt Titeo got to go. Craig Robertson got to go. As much as I love Alex Okafor, He's like 29, probably. 26? Dude, what is up with me and getting years wrong? I, that never happens. Anyway, that's odd. Sheldon Rankins, I'm in. Uh, Tyler Davison? Tyler? Yeah, I don't like that spelling. <laughs> Cam Jordan, uh, I think he's going to stay, of course. Ken Crowley's played really well this season. Delvin Bro can... Eh, I'll probably trade him. Marshawn Lattimore is the best cornerback in football. I don't know how. I mean, like, I do know how. Because he was my number one corner in the draft. He was phenomenal at Ohio, uh, at Ohio State. And he's just literally shutting down everyone. He's played so well. It is unbelievable. Let me let me get pull up a stat real quick. Marshawn Lattimore is currently averaging um, a passer rating when targeted in coverage of 28.8. Which is you know for some for some perspective there uh the next highest of any rookie quarter uh, cornerback is a 69.4 allowed uh passer rating if you were just to throw the ball away every time that would be a 36.9 passer rating marshall Lattimore is out allowing even less than that because of interceptions and deflected passes and things of that nature but uh enough talking about you know some of these beasts on this team i love marcus williams i love marshall Lattimore. I think this team is so young. Ken Crowley's like, what, 25, 26? 24. I, I'm overshooting by two years every single time, it seems, on some of these ages. But let's, you know, quit talking about it. Let's put Chris Banjo at starting strong safety. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe we don't do that. Kenny's only 26. Kenny was like 27. I guess he was only drafted in uh, 2015. So it wasn't that long ago. He was picked like, what, 15, 16? Love me some Kenny Vaccaro at Texas, but he's not hes not the answer here, I don't think. Manti Teo is only uh, 26 as well. Like, that's crazy, because he, uh, he's been absolutely nothing in the NFL. But I think I can make a trade here for Travis Frederick. I don't really want to give up a pick. I might. AJ Klein might have some value. 
Like, almost none. He'll probably have some value on the Browns. I might make a move there. Stupar is not going to have any value. Who else can I trade? I want to hold on to Gerald Hodges for right now. Probably use him in a different trade. Uh, left guard. I gotta trade a left guard. Oh, Andrews Pete. Forgot about that. That's another first round pick. Senio Calamente. That trade's going through. Kenny Vaccaro, Manti Teo, and Senio Calamente for Travis Frederick. He's a significant upgrade, I think, over Max Unger, who used to be one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL. Sadly, is no longer, and he's probably going to have at least some value to the Cowboys, and he does. I'm going to probably use him to get Zach Martin and really just kind of revamp this offensive line. Ooh, that's not... I don't think that's going to go through. And with this next trade, I'm trading Max Unger, Gerald Hodges Jr., and a fourth-round pick for Demarcus Lawrence from the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not sure whether I'm going to hold on to him or not. Uh, he is a really good pass rusher. Formerly a Boise State, of course, and um, I would left end. And um, he's really young, too. I loved him coming out of Boise State. I had like three pass rushers that I absolutely loved in that draft class. Uh, and it was Khalil Mack, of course. It was Jeremiah Tachu, and it was Demarcus Lawrence. And they've all kind of developed into really good players. Of course, Khalil Mack a little bit better, <laughs> obviously, than the rest. But Demarcus Lawrence in this season's really come out. And, uh, I mean, I don't, Jeremiah Tachi's been decent in years past. Nothing crazy, but he was, like, what, a third-round pick? Not sure if we're going to stick with Demarcus Lawrence or go a different direction, but I have a number of options. All right, we're bringing Juice back to the bayou. Jarvis Landry is coming back down to Louisiana. Nick Fairley, A.J. Klein in the third round in order to get Jarvis Landry back on the team. Or not back, he was never on the Saints, but back to Louisiana. But, uh, you know, decent trade for us. Helping out the receiving core a little bit. We got Michael Thomas. I have shown that I don't want Ted Ginn Jr. I've shown I don't really want Willie Sneed. Willie Sneed is a good player. I just, I want something else. And if Ted Ginn has green Niners, oh, don't, don't want Ted Ginn, please. I don't want to fleece you that bad. I might have to. Ted Ginn and Willie Sneed for a first round pick from the 49ers works. I didn't think that it would. I really want second round picks. I have none, clearly, and I think I can still do some stuff with, this, uh, with the 49ers. So I'll try to trade uh, Nate Stupar. Maybe Michael Mowdy will have some kind of value. I have no left outside linebackers. I don't really want Delvin Bro. Uh, looks like they all have value, so I could probably do something here. Nate Stupar and Michael Mowdy gets me a second round pick from the 49ers. I'm going to see if Delvin Bro can get me something here, because the 49ers still you know, need players. I don't want Delvin Bro. I'm more than comfortable with PJ Williams. Uh, we pretty much don't have anybody after that. But, you know, as smart as Delvin Bro looks, he's from LSU. I know it's a great story. I uh, just want a different look in there. I think PJ Williams maybe could be the guy. Delvin Bro and Chase Daniel is going to get me a third round pick. That's fine. I'm just accumulating draft picks. I really do want to hire one. I think. Drew Brees, you've been phenomenal for the New Orleans Saints organization. You brought them a Super Bowl championship. But I think it's time to look a different direction. And it's like, what do I want? Do I want to pick for Drew Brees or do I want um, players? I think I might be leaning towards a pick. I was hoping there would be interest in Ho'oli Kakaha there. I think I might add Alex Okafor and make this deal happen. And it does. Monster trade, trading... Um, Drew Brees, Andrews Pete, and Alex Okafor for a 1, a 2, and a 3 from the Broncos all this year. You know, of course, yet former first-round pick Andrews Pete, Alex Okafor, has turned into kind of like a, uh, I don't want to say a bench player, but like more of a, you know, a situational player. You know, whether he's a pass rusher or what have you, an outside linebacker, I think. I think it was him. I know he played for the Cardinals. I can't remember if it was uh, him on the Eagles or his brother. But uh, yeah, Drew Brees, arguably the best player to ever play on the Saints. I think you could easily, easily make that argument. I mean, it'd be tough to think of anyone um, who meant more to the Saints organization or has done more all time. You know, the only other players that even come to mind, I mean, you have guys like Joe Horn, uh, and that's kind of, I mean, Drew Brees is in the league of his own. Uh, Drew Brees, one of the best quarterbacks ever. You could argue top five quarterback ever. Definitely, without a doubt, top 10. But uh, yeah, for the sake of the fantasy style rebuild, we're moving on from Drew Brees. Brees is Christ. Don't flame me. Mark Ingram and, of course, Zach Streif. 
is going to get me the number one overall projected pick from the Browns. Zach Streif, very good right tackle. He's 32 or 33 though, so that does not bode well for progression. He's going to regress immediately. He'll be a 79 probably by the end of the season. I'm not really too interested in having that happen, so I figure I might get rid of him. And then Alvin Kamara is my featured back. I don't need anybody else. Don't need Mark Ingram taking away carries. I'm fine with what we have. Now it's all about, you know, getting these players in position to make plays. I'm not done making trades. I don't even feel like at all. I'm kind of just, you know, tearing this team down before trying to build them back up. And I have a number of guys that I can continue to trade, um, hopefully to get, you know, even more better players and picks. And I think the next step, oh my goodness, Jeff Kuhn, if you get that reference, which many will not. That would have been fantastic. Joey actually has value. Interesting. Best fullback of all time. Raphael Bush, a fifth and a sixth next year, is going to get me Calicio Semele from the Oakland Raiders. He is 28, so regression could begin to be a problem. I think that's, you know, the oldest I would probably ever trade for a player that's not in the 90s. But, you know, Calicio Semele is one of the top guards in the NFL. I think he's a little bit lower rated than he should be. His contract is kind of a pain. He should be good for another couple of years, though, and I plan on bringing in a quarterback and starting to win instantly, and I think that kind of starts with the offensive line. So now I'm pretty much trying to move on from John Kuhn, Kobe Fleener, and uh, John Greco, and I think then we're going to be good to go and start this thing. All right, so John Kuhn, Kobe Fleener, and a fifth-round pick is going to secure me Evan Ingram from the New York Giants, my favorite team. Very good player. So far, has played well with the Giants. Uh, it's been a lot of short passes, just run after the catch for him. But he's so fast that he's so difficult to cover, which makes him so deadly, especially in the slot. So he's our new starting tight end, which means I could move on from Josh Hill. And I'm still trying to find a spot for John Greco, but I there was nowhere that had you know him either yellow interest or green interest alongside Kobe Fleener or Jeff Kuhn. Uh, Jeff still, <laughs> but I, so I had to you know make the most out of what I had, and I'm still trying to make moves. Maybe, you know, the Steelers don't want the outlaw, Jesse James, anymore. And uh, I can give them Josh Hill for somebody or something. All right, Josh Hill to the Steelers is straight up going to be for a fourth round pick. That's fine. Now I'm trying to trade John Greco. If I can get something similar, that'd be fine. Be very happy with that for 79 overall right guard who is past 30. There's no green interest anywhere. That's cool. Okay, that's fine. It's not a huge deal. All right, shop trade before we get into this. I'm trading Demarcus Lawrence. A second rounder next year, Demarcus Lawrence and John Greco is going to get me Levante David. I'm not even sure if I've ever traded for Levante David in one of these rebuilds. So he makes a new appearance. I didn't really have any outside linebackers. He's going to fit what we're doing. I'm going to run a 4-3 uh, and hopefully some of these players can regret or me, progress. And then I can trade them next season for better players. Alex Anzalone can play middle linebacker. Why not? I'll go ahead and change that. I couldn't really find any trade partners for anybody else that I was interested in trading. Uh, couldn't find anyone really for Craig Roberts, uh, Robertson. Couldn't find any of these guys' um, trade partners that I tried to. So if you see some shitters left on the team, either I couldn't trade them uh, away or I didn't want to. So this is the team that we're going to rock with for season number one. I think it's a pretty good team, actually. I don't, well, I mean, obviously our quarterback is uh, Taysom Hill, a rookie out of Brigham Young. So there's absolutely nothing there. But, um, I mean, there are some bright spots. Brandon Coleman's kind of cool. Maybe he'll progress over this, although I doubt it. But, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and tank the first season, get a super high draft pick, and then take the quarterback of dreams. That's the goal. All right, so we are actually 4-3 and three at the midseason mark. Not tanking as badly as I would have... Matt Barkley, why are you on the team? No, get out of here. Get out of here, Matt Barkley. What the... Okay, no. That's not what I need. I need a shit record. We can't win games. What are you doing? D do you not understand tanking? Matt Barkley, no. Uh, Wes Lunt, yes. Fighting Illini, we're taking him. He's on the team now. Don't sign a quarterback. I want to tank badly. I also want more XP though, so I'm gonna spend some coach XP to get player progression package. And then re-sign, I think it was Jarvis Landry. Yes, it was. Who else is here? Who else? Zach Lyon I kind of want back. That's it. Travis Landry, when he signed back, he's like, I'm excited to say it was such a great team. What are you fucking... What are you, stupid? We're Like, we just signed... God knows who had a free agency. 
to be one of our quarterbacks. And we're starting at quarterback, Taysom Hill. What kind of great team is that? Suck up. We're moving to the playoffs. I, honestly, I wish I had Ryan Suck up at, at uh, quarterback. That'd be almost better because we would not win any games. He plays kicker. All right, so we missed the playoffs, thankfully. We don't have a lot of coach XP either, so I'm thinking like four, five wins maybe. And we get six. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Because we had Taysom Hill at starting quarterback. He was abysmal. Rushing Alvin Kamara didn't even really have a good season. Fumbled a, a decent bit. Only five touchdowns. Only 3.4 yards uh, per carry. That's really bad. Almost 1,000 yards, though. is decent. Jarvis Landry had a sixth season. 89 catches. 1,300 yards, 7 touchdowns. 7 touchdowns as well for Evan Ingram, who almost had 1,000 yards receiving. Blocking, how'd we do? You know, it's whatever. Defensively, Alex Anzalone led our team in tackles with 143. Tackles for loss, 17 from Cam Jordan. Quarterback sacks, 19 from Cam Jordan. 9.5 for Sheldon Rankins. 8.5 for Trey Hendrickson. 6 for Tyler Davison. Interceptions, we have 3 from Craig Robertson, 2 from rookie cornerback Marshawn Lattimore. That is not good enough for rookie of the year. Forced fumbles, three from Anzalone, three from Von Bell, two from a number of players, including Marshawn Lattimore. Fumble recoveries, two from Marshawn Lattimore and Cam Jordan. Any defensive touchdowns? A lot. Jeez, I see at least three. Marshawn Lattimore, Cam Jordan, and P.J. Williams. He played slot corner for us. I don't know how we didn't have the worst offense in the NFL. That was ranked 30th and not 32nd. I think Tom Brady won MVP. He did. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Matt Ryan. Doubt we'll see any Saints as we don't. Defensive Player of the Year, Cam Jordan at three. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Dalvin Cook. Evan Ingram at seven. Taysom Hill at eight. Trey Edmonds at ten. There's a chance for Marshawn Lattimore because he had a touchdown. He had fumbles forced and recovered. He had interceptions. I think he'll be like third. Alex Anzalone is second, actually. I don't know why I keep saying his name. Kind of weird. Marshawn Lattimore is seventh. Hmm. I knew he wasn't going to win it. It's just so tough for cornerbacks, especially if they don't go off. But uh, I think we're still in a fine position. I don't think Marshawn Lattimore has better than normal development, and he definitely would not have gotten it. Let's go ahead and check. He only has 13k XP as well. He is normal development. That's kind of tough. No one really got a tremendous amount of XP. Anzalone has 14k, which is decent. Evan Ingram has 30k, which is fantastic. Alvin Kamara, a decent bit. No, nothing crazy. But I think, and you guys will probably agree with me, if we can get a good quarterback, Season 2 is going to be far different than Season 1. I'm not even sure how we won six games, to be quite honest. Hmm. Eagles win their first Super Bowl. Interesting. Larry Fitz is a free agent. No interest. Same thing. Don't want Thomas Rawls. Don't want Cameron Braid. You never really want any of these guys here in Season 1. I mean, some of them are decent. Like, there's, How is Whitney Merciless only an 83 overall? He should be, like, at least an 87, in my opinion. Yeah, but there's, like, no one here that really, like, screams, go ahead and pick me up for the team. So we're just going to advance to stage two. I'm going to do some scouting. Hopefully, there's some sick players. I haven't seen any of them. I have had auto scouting on the entire time. So I'm going to do my own scouting now in the offseason. See you guys for the playoffs. Ooh, it's like a good linebacker ish, my Rick. Maybe. Maybe we draft it. Maybe we don't. I don't know. See you for the draft, though. Ah, oh, well, great quarterback class. Awesome. All you guys are actually. Horrific players. Ah, nice. All right, let me break this down for you guys real quick. We're in the draft, and this is quite possibly the worst group of players I have ever seen. Let me take you down a trip down positional needs road. We need a quarterback. Ah, we had the first overall pick. We should be in position to take an absolute stud, right? Uh, wrong. Absolute trash. It's... Terrible. This guy is really not all that good. I know, like, the B-pluses look good. That's not great for a quarterback. It really isn't. He's not going to be anyone good. He's not going to develop well. Reed Flynn, horrific. All these guys are undrafted, and this guy is the only, you know, like, green talent player in the entire draft, and he's awful. So that's quarterback. The rest of the offense, I think, is pretty good, other than maybe wide receiver. And, you know, like, there are some decent wideouts. They're all really slow. Uh, there are some good players throughout the draft, though. And then you look at defense, you say, hey, like maybe maybe middle linebacker or outside linebacker. There really aren't any because we need some outside linebackers. Nobody here for the most part. I have some players watched, but it's I needed a quarterback, bottom line, and there's not one. 
But I am going to go with that player, Ish Myrick, that we saw. He's out of the U. He's maybe been wearing that sick turnover chain the entire year. Crazy top three skills. Insanely strong. Decently fast. He's going to be flying off the edge. I'm going to play him at defensive end. I think he's going to be better than where Demarcus Lawrence could have gotten for us because I'm expecting a ridiculously high overall. I'm talking 83 to potentially up to 85, but he's not going to be that high of an overall based on our scheme fit because he doesn't fit right now. I'm expecting superstar development because I saw that story. Show me something here. I'll take it. Number two in the entire draft class. We took him at number one, 81 overall. Keep in mind that's way higher. He doesn't fit the scheme at all. Superstar development. This is the guy here. 83 speed. Eight, fuck, I click B. God. All right, we're back to him. 83 speed, 80 tackle, 82 block shed. All quite decent. Then he brings out the 92 hit power, 88 finesse move, 85 power move. What? 86 pursuit? My favorite thing about these trash, or not trash players, but these rookies, and he has 69 zone? Absolute monster. He has 68 play rec and 63 awareness, though. I love the trash awareness and play rec because they're so easy to upgrade, and they boost their overall so much. He's already ranked number 17 out of all left outside linebackers with that 81 that's not even in his scheme fit. He's going to be like an 84 or 85 defensive end, I think insane player with this pick i'm taking a defensive tackle just because i think he's going to be really good oh my god i didn't even realize this until just now we have the louisville connection nate buckley and sheldon rankins oh my goodness this can be sick storyline for our defensive line he's a beast too break number 11 we took him at number 8 80 overall quick development 81 strength though is good 78 tackle 86 block shed 82 power moves and he has 78 speed at defensive tackle at 6'4, 290 Honestly, this guy reminds me so much of Sheldon Rankins coming out of college. It's unreal. With this trade, I'm trading down with the Redskins. Uh, my first round pick next year for their first next year, their second next year, and their fifth next year. This draft class is so terrible. I might as well take a lot of these quality first round picks and turn them into picks in a better draft class, which there's no way next year's draft class can be anywhere near as terrible. Uh, I don't know what's here. Falcons, they're too good. I don't want that. Why, why would the Colts have the... They're not... I don't know. Let's see if the Browns want to make any moves. I'm going to do this manually. All right. With this trade, I'm trading a one and a two for a one and a two twos next year from the Browns. I think it's going to be more valuable. It's a shame that season two is not going to be as good as I wanted it to be since we have no quarterback still. Uh, but I am intent on drafting a quarterback. I don't really want to trade for one, so that's where we stand right now. I'm in another best situation uh, for us. Take best player available. Byron Colvin out of Penn State, 6'3", 269. Decent size for a 4'3 defensive end, which would fit our scheme. Uh, if anything, he's going to be a situational pass rusher or trade bait. B-plus power moves is great. B-plus pursuit, B-minus tackle. I love his top three skills. Uh, I think he's going to be a very good player for us. Here we go. 77 overall quick development 88 power moves with 83 speed flying off the edge rank number 34 we took him at 33 quick development as well uh surprisingly decent drafts for us so far but i'm you know i'm just taking the only good players that are available pretty much all right here we go shamel humphrey out of bethune cookman decent enough top three skills he's fast at 443 speed crazy vertical here he is uh says it's a reach I don't mind it because you see 92 speed, 85 catch, 86 catch in traffic, 84 spec catch with 94 jumping. All it is is upgrade route running and awareness and probably release. Release isn't even that low. But all it is is upgrade those three things. He's going to come in and start in the slot immediately. And he could be a beast by the end of the first season. I wish he had some sort of quick or, you know, obviously superstar development. But, you know, way better player than that 72 overall reach would indicate. I do want to take here Demarcus. All right, Demarcus, if that is your real name, Demarcus Wilson. I'm not going to. I don't need more pass rushers. I might take Cesar Atagwe just because he looks so good. But I think with this pick, since we are in the third round, I have a three, a four, and a six remaining. I'm going to take an order of players that I don't think are going to be available. So I'm going to take the two fifth round projected guys, Jason Shropshire and Cesar Atagwe, and then come back and see if CJ Britt or Mike Lindsay is available. I think these guys are kind of can't miss prospects. So I'm going to take Cesar Atagwe first. And uh, he is a 75 overall quick development. This is what I'm talking about. Oh my God, he's insane. 84 block shot, 85 power move, 85 tackle. 
like there's so many good players you can find late in the draft he's ranked number 63 we took him at 91 he was supposed to go in the fifth round this is a good pick and it's in the third round quick development as well yeah uh my drafting skills are unmatched in the rebuild community there we go jason shropshire out of delaware state is that delaware valley state maybe i don't know amazing top three skills amazing combine here he is I was dumb what I just did. However, that was a dumb fucking pick. Isn't like, you know, when people say like, that's that was dumb hype, dude. Whatever. He's ranked 19 in the draft. We took him at 127. Superstar development, 79 overall, 89 strength, 79 tackle, 84 blocks, 85 power moves. His play rec and awareness are absolute trash, which means like he's so good in every other department. I don't know what I'm going to do with this defensive line, honestly. It's kind of insane. I'm not sure. I really don't know. Tell me someone who does it better than me. Oh, answer. No one. It was a multiple choice with one answer. So, a not multiple choice? I don't know. The rest of the draft is absolute trash. Ooh, that reminds me. I really wanted to draft a free safety who looked insane, and I didn't end up drafting him because I totally forgot he existed. I'll take this guy, Ellis Polly, out of Michigan State. Excellent pick. It's what we do. 90 speed, 82 zone, 77 hit power. He's not going to play. But, you know, just for the shits and gigs, I'll take another excellent pick. Why not? All right, Ish Myrick moving him to right end. And we'll see what his true overall would be as a speed rusher. I think it fits 99. Damn, he looks like a beast. I wanted to see his ass, by the way. That's why I turned him around. Yeah, he's an 85 overall right end. Um, clearly, that last part was very sus. I wanted to see his name on the jersey, clearly. But, uh, yeah, he's a monster. 85 overall right end. I don't know what to do with this defensive line. Just everyone is a monster. Jason Shropshire out of Delaware State, superstar. I mean, we took him. He's a monster. We took Nate Buckley. Quick is insane. Does Sheldon Rankins have quick? He doesn't. That's crazy that I'm about to trade Sheldon Rankins. <laughs> That's so wild. I, I have to. I don't want to. I think he's a beast, but I, I have to. I, I don't have any choice. I don't quite understand why everyone's playing without confidence. We're coming off a pretty good draft, especially for the offensive line. Like, your jobs are all safe. If anything, the defensive line should have low confidence because, like, none of you are staying on this team. Because, uh, I mean, Sheldon Rankins is going to go. He's an 84 overall, granted, but he has normal development. I upgraded him. He's just still not even as good and has nowhere near the potential of Nate Buckley or Jason. Jason? Yeah, Jason Shropshire. It's not even close. Uh, David Onyemata has got to go. Tyler Davison has to go. Sheldon Rankins has to go. I don't really want to trade them. Uh, but there, we don't really have any cornerbacks or safeties. I like Marcus Williams. He's staying. I need linebackers. I'm not trading for a quarterback. I'm not doing it. But, uh, yeah. Trade defensive tackles for linebackers. That's step two. All right. With my first trade of season number three, I just whistle. That was odd. Sheldon Rankins, David Onyemata, and a third-round pick from Miles Jack from the Jack some Bill Jaguars get it there's no joke there at all but that's my first trade I am making more I have still too many defensive tackles Tyler Davison has to go Trey Hendrickson has to go holy caca I won't have any value I might trade Byron Colvin who I drafted who's kind of sick I mean Ken Crawley isn't getting upgraded at all it's an absolute mess out here to be honest absolute mess all right cool found my middle linebacker <laughs> Tyler Davidson, Trey Henderson, Davison, jeez, I guess uh, I'll probably get the D later, <laughs> gay, Trey Henderson, second round pick for Luke Keekley from the Carolina Panthers, and this linebacking core is actually uh, pretty insane now, we helped out with the defensive line in the draft, we have insane players, like this is, this is an insane draft class on defense, now the linebackers are insane, Von Bell is going to be there. I don't like the secondary. Maybe that's a this year's draft sort of deal, but I need receivers-ish. I need one more, but I actually have high hopes for uh, Shamel Humphrey. Still no quarterback. Uh, it's a bit of an issue, I won't lie. We'll deal with it. Who are you? Sean Streif? All right, maybe it's Zach Streif's younger, whoever. He's on the team now. This is the squad. You guys have seen him. We're simming to the midseason mark. I don't have auto scouting turned on. It doesn't matter. I'm scouting one position, and it's quarterback. 
and well okay that more than one safety corner receiver that's kind of it to be honest though oh ken crowley is a free agent i haven't seen our record i know luke keekley looks like the nfc player of the week on defense boom three and five i don't know how we're actually even winning games without a quarterback oh actually we do have a quarterback trevor knight Jesus, that's that's a rough situation. Anyway, do I want to bring back Ken Crawley? He's playing really well in real life, but he's not getting upgraded at all in this game. It's so expensive to upgrade him, and he's getting, like, no points. I'll bring him back. At worst case scenario, he's, like, I don't know, a uh, third or fourth receiver. Rec receiver. That would be worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, he's, like, a third or fourth CB. PJ Williams is another guy that I kind of like but isn't getting upgraded at all. I brought back the top three guys, Ken Crawley, Thomas Morissette, and Will Lutz, addressing special teams a little bit. I mean, I don't know. I, I need that, so it's a thing. Spencer Whitworth, are you sick? Oh, okay. How many first round projected quarterbacks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We should be able to find our guy here. It's almost worse than the last situation. There's no sick quarterback. None of them stand out. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack at this point. There's like 80 first-round quarterbacks, and they're all like the same, and no one's amazing. Sean McCaffrey's pretty good. Oh, no. We missed out on the playoffs. Shoot. 7-9. and nine. How do we keep winning these many games? It doesn't make sense. This many, obviously. I developed an accent real quick. How do we keep winning these many games? Trevor Knight actually didn't even have that bad of a season. Rushing Alvin Kamara is still trash. I'm not sure why. His longest run was five yards. What? I don't know. Receiving Jarvis Landry, 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns. Evan Ingram, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Rookie, Shamel Humphrey, did kind of okay stuff, things, rather. Blocking, offensive line, performed admirably. Defensively, Luke Keek led our team in tackles with 157. Tackles for loss would be 14 from Cameron Jordan, 13 from Shropshire. Quarterback sack still 13 from rookie Ish Myrick out of Miami. 11 for Cam Jordan, 6.5 for Nate Buckley, 5 for Jason Shropshire, or Shropshire. Interception, six for Luke Keekley, three for Levante David, three for Marshawn Lattimore. Forced fumbles, we have three from Cam Jordan, two from PJ Williams. Fumble recoveries, one from Cam Jordan, one from Isham Eirich. Any defensive touchdowns? No. I see Blocko, I might as well. One for Cam Jordan. Yearly awards. Russell Wilson takes home MVP honors. NFC Office Player of the Year goes to Russell Wilson as well. There's Trevor Knight at eight. What? Defense Player of the Year is Luke Keekley. We knew that. I saw a story. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Deron Elliott. Shamel Humphrey, number three. That would have been clutch to win. Defensive Rookie of the Year, it's not. That's the corner I was going to draft, to be fair. I chose Ishmael Rick instead. I'm comfortable with my decision. He finishes in second. He had a sixth season, to be fair. Nate Buckley at eight. Jason Shropshire at nine. Not like they were going to get a better development trait anyway. They already have superstar, superstar, and quick on that defensive line, not including, um, not including Cam Jordan. 47 KXP for Ishmael. Is that a Pro Bowl? It's Defensive Rookie of the Year. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna question it. You know what? I'm not gonna question it. Was he not first in in line for it? Absolutely. It's a fair argument. Have they given it to him anyway? That's just how good he is. Can I fucking simulate, please? Jesus. All right. I don't really have a care for PJ Williams. I assume Jalen Ramsey's gonna be in free agency. I would like to sign him. I don't want to sign him every time, though. I feel like I've been signing. He's not even here. Ooh, the Clownvis. <laughs> Clownvis shirts in my merchandise store now. This is my first time shouting it out. Not many of you will hear this, probably. Um, if you're interested in a Clownvis shirt, you can check the link in the description to see what they look like. As you guys know, I say Clownvis on occasion. So that's a thing. There's not even anyone good in here. What's going on? Oh, my goodness. A top 10 projected pick? who literally told Roger Goodell to his face to fuck off and skip the combine. Ooh, that's tempting. 
Do I need him in any way? Absolutely not. But the want is there for sure. All right, NFL Draft Season 3. We don't even have a top 10 pick. And by that, I mean we have the number 9 overall pick. I didn't see it. Give me a break. All right. Um, uh, I feel like my quarterback's still on the board. I might take him. All right, I'm going for it. If he's trash, I'm trading for one. I don't even care. But he looks pretty good. Uh, I can't. He doesn't look amazing. He looks probably like above an 80. Don't know about his development. Could be a swing and a miss. I think it's going to be a swing and like, you know, a single to the gap. But like it goes to the gap, but it's hit not hard enough. So like the left fielder gets it and throws it in, holds him at one. I think it's a pretty accurate description. 79 overall, quick development. Certainly not bad. 79 deep accuracy, 85 medium, 86 short. I'm fine with that. 91 throw power, 70 awareness. Yeah, he could be a decent player. That quick development will certainly help. Not a bad pick. Just not an amazing pick. All right, back to back. I'm taking... Am I taking this guy? I don't know, actually. Second guessing. I really do like Antoine Potter. But just Darian Lewis Harris looks a little bit better, but he's also slower. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to take... I can't take both of them. Surely not. I might. I don't know. Uh... Darian Lewis Harris, 89 speed, is pretty weak. He's very well rounded. Ranked 18, we took him at 15. I might go ahead and take the other cornerback with this following up pick. I'm not sure if he's going to be as good or better. I just I feel like I like his stats a bit more, and it's only because of speed, pretty much. But speed is important. He has slow development. He is slightly better though. I might end up trading one of those guys. I don't really care about slow development for a cornerback that's likely going to be the third or the fourth, you know, cornerback on my team. So I think what I'm going to do is actually trade these two second round picks and maybe a starting cornerback currently on my team for a sick corner, if possible, or a, uh, a wide receiver. Still kind of need one of those. All right, I don't know who this is. Some drafted rookie. He looks insane. 23 years old, 86 overall. Two second round picks. Doesn't even get me close. Okay, just, just checking. We're on the same page. However, the addition of Ryan Ramchek to the trade gets it done. That was kind of ballsy, considering I don't have any backup at that position who's even somewhat competent. I, I don't have anyone. I'm going to have to make some moves now. I'll trade picks. I don't care. Hey, Joe Tooney, you play right tackle now. A four and a five and a five next year gets it done. Pretty much the end of my draft. All right, we had a decent draft, I think. Uh, nothing crazy, but I don't know. We got our new starting quarterback who's somewhat competent. I could have done with a better receiver. We're going to be fine, I think, for the time being with Shamel Humphrey. On the defense side of the ball, we traded for some players. We got uh, this fellow. Nope, didn't mean to do that. We have this fellow, Henry Morton, who is actually insane. Did not even realize 91 man, 90 zone, 90 speed, superstar development, 67 awareness. We're going to get that up. We're going to make you at least a little bit better. You, you know, didn't come with any XP. Yeah, this is a decent team. I still need safeties, dude. Von Bell is not getting it done for me. I'm going to trade, I think, Lewis Harris. He's good, but I mean, I think he'll have value if I trade him. So I'm going to trade him for safety. Give me... I don't even know if I want an established player. I might want like a rookie safety or like a drafted safety who's kind of nice. Lewis Harris should have like pretty much universal interest except for teams with CBs. You know what? Give me Kevin Byard. He had like three... Oh, I can't even get him. Oh, man, okay. I definitely could. I'm going to I'm gonna do something for it. Okay. Stay with me. Okay, never mind. I definitely cannot. Plan B. <laughs> I'll take a Malik Hooker. Surely they are interested in my man Darian Lewis Harris. They're not. Okay. Plan C. All right. This is pretty much my uh, pretty much my one option. Ken Crawley, a four and a three for Lamarcus Joyner. He's gonna come in right away and play free safety. I'm gonna move Marcus Williams over to strong side. I have hopes for him. He's not developing quickly at all. Just, I haven't been able to get him enough XP, and I'm not exactly sure what to do about that. It's a, it's a work in progress. It is season, I want to say, we're going to enter season four. Yeah, we're going to enter season four, and we have 
done absolutely nothing. But we finally have our quarterback. We have XP. What's it? Is this season, season three? Uh, this is season three, I want to say. Hold up. Okay, you were just a rookie. Were you in my first draft class? I believe that you were. Okay, we're actually going at a much better pace than I thought we were. Okay, we're great. Is you in your second year? That means... Okay, wow, we're actually going into year three. Okay, never mind. This is still a success. Well, it's not yet, but it's going to be. Very, very high hopes for this season number three. We have a team. I'm going to upgrade. The team's going to look sick. You guys are like, wow, that's a sick team. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Idiot. I don't know why. I wouldn't call you an idiot unless you're being an idiot, kid. In which case, I might. Why Why did I even just include that in here? I gotta... I'm just gonna upgrade. Don't worry about me. Alright, this is the team for the start of the regular season. I have very high hopes. Myrick is up to... I thought, thought his name started with an J. It's Ish. I don't know. Uh, decent team, I would say. I think you guys would agree. Defensive line looks kind of insane. However, there's only going up from here. It's in the regular season, so we played at the preseason, so my quarterback actually has some XP. So I'll spend that real quick on that. All right, 80 overall. Season three commencing now. See you at the midseason mark. All right, midseason mark. We are five and two. Joe Tooney is a free agent. Maybe if he was Joe Zero, he would be, you know, 7-0. Is that, is that the worst joke I've ever made? Quite possibly, yes. Probably should have said Oni instead of Zero. Live and learn. All right, we brought back Miles Jack, Michael Thomas, and Joe Tooney. Currently not sure what I'm going to do with Von Bell. He has not progressed well at all. XP situation, nothing is really blowing me away. I will just see you guys for the playoffs, which I think we have a pretty good shot to make. All right, here we go, and we made the playoffs. 14-2. and two. Just to show you guys that no tomfoolery or shenanigans occurred during the simulation. Zero forced wind. We just turned into an absolute beast under rookie quarterback. Have no idea what his name is. We're going to find it out. Aaron Rodgers won MVP. But Sean McCaffrey, that's it. 4,588 yards, 40 touchdowns to 19 picks. Obviously, more than one interception per game is not ideal, but 40 touchdowns is, that is ideal. Rushing Alvin Kamara is still absolutely shitting the bed. Uh, however, he broke off a nine-yarder this season, so big things. Receiving, Michael Thomas, 85 catches, 751 yards, and five touchdowns. However, Evan Ingram, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns, juice. 1,200 yards on 79 catches, 11 touchdowns. Shamel Humphrey, 882 yards and 6 touchdowns. Blocking. Who is Chase Campman and why is he playing right tackle? I didn't move Joe Tooney. I didn't. Oh, my God. All right. Defensively, Luke Keekley led our team in tackles with 129. Tackles for loss, 10 from Cam Jordan. Quarterback sacks, 15 for Ish Myrick, who is just getting better and better each year. As you can see, 13, I think it was. Yeah, 13 sacks. And now 15 sacks. And even more tackles for loss. Even more tackles. He's just getting involved. I love to see it. Who else got quarterback sacks? 11.5 for Cam Jordan. 7 for Jason Shropshire. 3.5 for Nate Buckley. 3 for Levante David. Interceptions, 5 for Luke Keekley, 4 for LaMarcus Joyner. 3 for Williams, Lattimore, and Morton. Force fumbles. Three for Miles Jack, two for Levante David. Fumble recoveries, one for a handful of players. Any defensive touchdowns? No. Awards. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. Sean McCaffrey, number three in the MVP race. That's undoubtedly AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, however, goes to, or excuse me, NFC, is what I meant. NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Sean McCaffrey's all the way down at number six. Defensive Player of the Year is Luke Keekley and then Cam Jordan. Any other Saints? No Byrick? Ish Myrick? Man, that ish whack. I hate myself. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Sean McCaffrey, of course, wins. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Antoine Potter. The cornerback. That's right. He won. How? 
I don't know. That's That's got to take away his slow development, right? That's got to. He has 31k XP and still slow development, despite winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. What did he do to even win that, man? I don't remember seeing anything crazy. Two picks and 63 tackles. Is that what? It, is that all it takes? Did he return kicks? No. Jesus. All right. Oh shit! I didn't realize Marcus Williams has 44k XP. He made the Pro Bowl. Okay. That's the kind of thing we needed to happen like last year. I'll take it now though. Joe Tooney. I can't believe he didn't start anywhere in the offensive line. Right tackle it is. 63k for McCaffrey. I love it. And he made the Pro Bowl too. Great season. Let's go ahead and upgrade all these guys. So we can face the... Who is it? The Falcons. 14-2 and two Falcons. Division rival in the division round of the playoffs. Okay. I'm in. Sign me up. All right, so this is the upgraded team on offense. McCaffrey playing up to a 90 in his rookie season. Alf Kamara up to an 88. Juice, Michael Thomas both upgraded a little bit. Offensive line, kind of the same deal. Evan Ingram is up to a 96 with confidence, of course. But most notably, the defense is absolutely unreal. Marcus Schoener is up to a 90. Levante David, 93. Luke Keekley, of course, 99. Miles Jack up to an 87. Marcus Williams with confidence is also playing up to an 87. And then you get to the cornerbacks. Marshawn Lattimore is almost a 90. Henry Morton is almost up to a 90. Our rookie with slow development, Antoine Potter, is up to an 85. Da uh, Darian Lewis-Harris, 82. And then the defensive line. Ish Myrick is up to a 96 with confidence. Nate Buckley, Jason Shropshire are both up to an 86 overall without confidence. And then Cam Jordan is up to a 98 overall with confidence. We're out here. We have an insane team. We should be able to beat... What am I doing here? That's not what I meant. I want to simulate here to the conference championship. Do we beat the Atlanta Falcons? We don't. All right, the fourth season will be our final season, and I really do expect a Super Bowl, uh, at least berth, whether we make it and win or not. Um, I expect us at least to make it there. But I don't know. Team's got to develop a little bit more, and I think we should be there. This offseason is really going to be, you know, pretty boring. I don't think I'm going to do anything. I don't even know what I would take here in free agency besides an offensive lineman. Tyreek Hill? Okay, that, that answers my question, actually. I'll take Tyreek Hill. I forgot that my receiving core was a little bit weak. And we got both Tyreek Hill and Kenneth Dixon. I wanted a better backup running back, and we got one. This team looks absolutely insane. Tyreek Hill will be in the slot, despite being the new best overall receiver on our team. We have now a very, very good receiving core. We have a solid offensive line. Our defense is undoubtedly the best part of this team. I always try to build up the defense. I really love defense way more than I like offense. It's just kind of my thing. Uh, but yeah, insane group of players. I don't even know. I, there's no point in even drafting. I'm going to simulate there. Probably just take some random shots in the dark. Maybe I hit one of those shots from deep like Ray Allen on the Bucks, Sonics, Celtics. He, it doesn't matter. I mean... You know, Jesus Shuttlesworth is, I don't even, where am I going with this? I don't know. I, I'm just going to take shots and maybe they'll go in. Who knows? Oh my God. No, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. A baller skips the combine. Don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't, no, no. All right. <laughs> I had to. I had to. Just to get him on the team is going to propel us into the Super Bowl. That's it. I'm just going to simulate the rest. We got the baller. Uh, there's nobody who even looks good in the draft. I don't have any top three skills, but combine wise, nobody. Uh, I don't need any position either at all. So, I mean, we're fine from that front. Maybe the CPU will grab somebody half decent. However, I would highly doubt it. Yeah, they've just taken absolute trash and drafted all of it. <sighs> Horrific, really it is. But this team is insane. It's a Super Bowl caliber team. And this team is only going to upgrade themselves even more over the course of this season. Tyreek Hill, you're playing in the slot. Stop. All right, here we go. This is the team for season number four, the fourth and final season. I think we can make the Super Bowl. We're going to simulate straight to the playoffs, and hopefully we do just that. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to stop it probably just before the regular season. Just after, I mean. Don't know what the difference between before and after is. Tough thing. This is the morning before pill. I need 80 more XP. Shoot. All right, we got it. 
I want that QB training boost. He's going to be a 95 at least by the end of the season. We're 2-0 already. I mean, we're golden. All right, I already see in the bottom left. Sean McCaffrey is MVP. We went 14-2. and We'll check out the stats and see just how exactly we got there. Wow, what a season for Sean McCaffrey. 5,316 yards, 53 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions rushing. Alvin Kamara actually put something to get. Oh my goodness, Alvin Kamara, please settle down. 13 yards, 17 touchdowns, and he took his career long of nine and turned it into 98. He had a 98 yard run. Oh my goodness. Maybe it was just Kenneth Dixon. Maybe that's what we needed on the team to get him going. We have three receivers over a thousand yards. Tyreek Hill had nearly 1500 yards and 16 touchdowns. Michael Thomas, seven touchdowns. Juice had 1400 yards and nine touchdowns. Evan Ingram, 1100 yards and 11 touchdowns. No 100 yard receivers on our team though, blocking. Um, you know, only 12 total sacks allowed from our offensive line. Defensively, 126 tackles from Luke Keekley at our team. Don't text me. T tackles for loss. Jason Trapshire led our team with 10 quarterback sacks. We have 13 from Ish Myrick, 9.5 for Cam Jordan, 8 for Jason Trapshire. Interceptions, 9 from Luke Keekley, 3 from Lamonte David, 2 from Marshawn Lattimore. Jeez, dude. This team is a Super Bowl team. Three forced fumbles from Lamarcus Joyner. No real, you know, break out there in fumbles recovered we had the first offensive yards in the nfl luke keekley had a defense touchdown sean mccaffrey is your league mvp nfc office player of the year is also sean mccaffrey said that before it popped up defensive player of the year is luke keekley oh my goodness we're out here offensive rookie of the year can you imagine if we were in first place for every single award no but the rams had some rookies man all right we have an insane team <laughs> we're gonna have a ton of xp i'm gonna where is you? Hold up. Oh my goodness, he has 120k. I'm gonna be sick. I clicked out. I'm like, why does he have 273 XP? It's not. It's 120,273. Holy Jesus Christ. Two Pro Bowls, NFL pass rating leader, QB of the year, offense player of the year, MVP. This is the new Johnny Cash. John Cash from last year. Oh my goodness. He's gonna be a 99 overall. Defensively, decent amount of XP. Marshawn Lattimore is going to be like 95 probably. Anyway, I'm going to use this XP, upgrade the team, and then see you guys for the playoffs. All right, this is the fully upgraded team. Tyreek Hill is actually a 99 overall. Sean McCaffrey is only a 97. I don't know how we had 120k XP and couldn't get him upgraded, but his passing stats are all phenomenal. So I'll take 98 deep, 99 medium, 99 short throw accuracy with a lower awareness, lower play action. It doesn't really matter. Defensively, Marshawn Lattimore is a 93. I mean, the entire team is just really unbelievable. I expect nothing less than the Super Bowl victory. Who do we play in the divisional Packers steamroll? Move on. We lost. Okay. Lost by five. Nice. We had 512 offensive yards. Where the fuck is our defense, man? Do they do anything? Sean McCaffrey threw for 436 yards and four touchdowns. We lose. Alvin Kamara put the ball on the ground twice. <sighs> okay. All right, well, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. I want to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy. <sighs> what a piece of shit this player is.